to cover up an alleged affair with adult film star Stormy Daniels. He has pleaded not guilty to all charges. Trump spoke earlier to reporters before heading into court. Nothing like this has ever happened before. There's never been anything like it. Every legal scholar said this case is nonsense. It should never have been brought. It doesn't deserve anything like this. There is no case, and they've said it. People that don't necessarily follow or like Donald Trump said this is an outrage that this case was brought. Jury selection begins today and is expected to last about six weeks. Our Robert Costa is outside of the courthouse now with a little bit more about what we can expect today. Robert, good morning. Good morning, Anne-Marie. The Trump legal team has worked for months to delay this trial, but it begins this morning with former President Trump appearing here soon to be in the courtroom for the jury selection process. Trump tells us he'll be watching this very closely, but it's a significant moment for his campaign, taking him off the campaign trail and potentially having real political consequences. I've been indicted more than Al Capone. A rally cry on the campaign trail, now a courtroom reality, as President Trump today becomes the first former president to stand trial in a criminal case. When I walk into that courtroom, I know I will have the love of 200 million Americans behind me. Trump faces 34 felony counts of falsifying business records, accused of scheming to funnel payments to adult film star Stormy Daniels, through former lawyer Michael Cohen. Prosecutors say it was an attempt to stop an alleged past affair from becoming a scandal just before the 2016 presidential election. 34 false statements and business records that were concealing criminal conduct. Trump has pleaded not guilty on all counts. And today, prosecutors and Trump's legal team will begin the complicated process of interviewing and eliminating more than 500 potential jurors. The lengthy juror questionnaire poses 42 questions, including if they've ever attended a Trump rally or if they follow the former president on social media. This is a lengthy process. I do not expect it to take a couple of days. I frankly expect it to take a couple of weeks. Trump's team is expected to use jury selection to argue he can get a fair trial in Manhattan. And sources say they will likely push to move the case elsewhere. On Friday, I questioned Trump at Mar-a-Lago. And what are you watching as jury selection begins in New York? You know, jury selection is largely luck. It depends who you get. It's very unfair that I'm having a trial there. Former President Trump will be obligated to be in the courtroom here in Lower Manhattan for up to six weeks, maybe more. And the scene here outside Manhattan Criminal Court this morning well, there's a lot of security and protesters. Police and Secret Service personnel are everywhere, as are reporters. And you had some pro-Trump people uh, chanting uh, across uh, the street just a few moments ago, and some anti-Trump protesters saying that no one is above the law. Anne Marie. So I'm curious about uh, that press availability that he gave at Mar-a-Lago. What was the mood like uh, when you know if you could even kind of figure? if you could come to any kind of conclusion, the mood when it comes to Donald Trump and his advisors? It's a great question. I was there in Mar-a-Lago, at Mar-a-Lago, to talk to the former president. He had this news conference on Friday. The setting was really uh, revealing because Trump was standing there with House Speaker Republican Mike Johnson. And so just ahead of this criminal trial in New York, Trump was projecting solidarity with the Republican Party, the highest ranking Republican in the House of Representatives, the Speaker of the House. And he was signaling to the party that, yes, he's facing this trial, but his whole mood there, his whole presence was about shrugging it off. And when I asked him about jury selection, he said, really, it's about the luck of the draw here. And he dismissed the idea that he was taking it very seriously. Interesting. Um, six weeks, possibly, he's obligated to be there. That's going to take a big chunk out of any sort of campaigning that he might do. I mean, I know he likes to talk a lot kind of before he goes into court and after he leaves. But this has got to have an impact on his campaign strategy. Fewer rallies, to be sure, in the coming six weeks. It's just hard for Trump logistically to plan those kind of events if he's going to be stuck here in a courtroom. This is not some kind of voluntary exercise. It's a criminal trial. He needs to be here, according to the prosecutors and the judge. And so he will be here. You can expect him maybe to go to Trump Tower or some of his other properties in the area to have news conferences to try to shape 
his own message, but this is something that really is a curveball for politics in America right now. Mm -hmm. So what are you going to be watching for today? Jury selection could be something that takes two weeks, three weeks. Uh, no one's expecting it to be wrapped up by the end of this week. How does Trump handle jury selection? Does he start to say that because New York has many Democrats and he can't get a fair trial? I'm told by sources close to the Trump legal team they are going to push in the coming days for a change of location. There's no guarantee that would happen in any way, but that's their argument they're likely to make publicly today and this week. All right, Robert Costa, thank you very much. Secretary of State Antony Blinken is speaking to reporters after meeting with the Iraqi deputy prime minister. Let's listen. Uh, over the weekend, as you know, Iran launched hundreds of missiles and drones against Israel. This was an attack unprecedented in its scope and uh, in its scale. In its scope because it represented the first direct attack by Iran on Israel. And